Okay, so now we're going to do a combinatorics example. Permutations and combinations and counting things, all is called, mathematically, it's called combinatorics. So in this example, we want to form a group of five people out of 12. So how many ways are there of doing this? Well, if you think about it, a group implies that the order doesn't matter. All right, I'm just choosing a couple of students and I don't care the order. So this is going to be 12 choose 5. 12 factorial over 5 factorial times 12 minus 5 factorial, which is 12 factorial over 5 factorial times 7 factorial. Now, if we work this out, Stopping at 7 factorial, and I'm going to have 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 times 7 factorial. I can cancel out the 7 factorials. I can say 3 times 4 cancels with the 12. 5 times 2 cancels with the 10. And I'm left with 11 times 9 times 8 which, if you work that out, is going to be 792. Okay, so there are 792 ways to form a group of five people out of 12. Okay, so if we ask, what if two of the people insist on being together? So we've got this group of 12 people, and two of them are, you know, in love, and so they want to, they insist on either being together in the group, or neither of them being in the group at all. So any team must consist of either both parties or neither party. Okay, so we can break this into cases. Case one, a team with both Both has how many other people? Well, the team is five people. If we've included both of them in this team, that means there are three people less or uh, left. And the other option will be a case with a team with neither. So if the team has both, then we need to pick the other three people. So it's going to be 12 choose, or excuse me, not 12, because we've already picked two out of them. So there's only 10 left, right? So we had 12 originally. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And these two lovebirds have decided they want to work together. So there's 10 left, so this is going to be 10, we need to pick 3 of them, so 10 to use 3, and that's going to work out to 10 factorial over 3 factorial times 7 factorial, which is going to work out to 120. Different ways of doing that. Now, let's say the team has neither. Well, just again, looking at this picture right here, we now only have 10 people to choose from, and we have to choose all five because they're going to sit out. So then this becomes 10 factorial over 5 factorial times 5 factorial. And again, you can think of this, this is just 10 minus 5 factorial. I'm just sort of skipping a step. And this is going to work out to 252. So this is an either or situation, not an and, right? The team is going to either contain uh, both of them or it's going to take contain neither. So the total number of ways of creating the group is 
we're going to add these together and we're going to get that this is 372. So you might have remembered when we were doing permutations and we were doing a, an anagram example where we were keeping the, for the C and the O together, we merged it together um, into a single letter. So let's see what that happens. Why doesn't that work? Because if you try that, you're going to find a different example. You're, you're going to get a different number. So we have... If you did that, we try to merge these last two people together. Well, the reason this isn't going to work now is because now if we try to find a group of five, uh, one, two, three, four, five, we do this. So we say that's a group of five, but there's really a um, group of five, but there's six people. Right, because we have these two merged together. So this worked when we were ordering the numbers around because we just combined two letters to sort of, so they always stuck together no matter how we ordered it around the word. But this isn't just ordering, now we're selecting a subset. And if we merge them together, as in this drawing, then if you select a subset containing that, you'll have an extra person. And so that's not gonna work. All right, we, we don't want to do that. We want to do it the way we worked out on this slide where we break it into cases. Breaking into cases is going to be a, a, a great way to do things with this type of problem. Okay, so here's an interesting problem. Maybe those two people broke up and refused to work together or something else happened. So now two people out of the 12 refuse to work together. Nobody uh, out of the 12 insists on working together in this problem, only that two won't work together. So I'm gonna have you give this one a try on your own, but I'm gonna give you a hint, and that hint is to name the people. So I'm gonna say that persons A and B will not be on the team together. Your job is to figure out how many cases there are and what they are to solve this. I'll give you a few minutes to work it. Pause the video. I'll give you a few minutes to work it out. Okay, this is actually a pretty tricky problem, or a little bit tricky, I should say. It's not very tricky, but it's a little bit tricky. And the thing a lot of students struggle with that I've tried to help with this name is that we can no longer just use two cases anymore. All right, so now we're actually gonna have three cases. Case one is gonna be that person A is, um, person A is in the group or on the team. Meaning person B is not. Case two is person B is on the team. Meaning A is not. Now that's important because if you don't name them, it's really easy to just say, well, one of them's not on the team. But there's actually, it goes, there's two different scenarios like that. So you wanna break them into two separate cases. And then finally, case three, neither is on the team or group okay so this one is a little tricky in that you need to break it into three cases i find that naming the persons involved you know even if just with a's and b's is a really good way to not get confused with these problems okay so i've rewritten these cases out um, and remember we have 12 original, and we're trying to find a team of five. So we're going to figure these out. These are all going to be comp different combinations. 
So if A is on the team but B is not, we know we know about those two. So we know that if we have the the team and everybody else, we know that A is here and B is here, but how many spots are left on the team? Well, since there's supposed to be a team of five, there's going to be four spots left. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to figure out how many of everybody else there are. Well, pretty much to start with, there's everybody except A. So that is 12 minus 1 means there's going to be 11 people, except there's also B, and we don't want to include B in that group. Right, so we're going to actually say A and B are both spoken for. So 12 minus 2 is going to give us 10 people left in the group. So this is going to be 10 choose 4. Right, we need to take 10 of these remaining people and choose how to fill those four spots. And if you work this out, you can get there's 210 options. Now, for case two, it's going to be the exact same, except we're just going to change the position. We're going to have B there and A in here, but otherwise it's going to be the same. So we're going to have 10 choose 4, and this is equal to the same thing. And then finally, the scenario where neither one of them are on the team, we have our team, we have everybody else. And neither are on the team, so A and B are sitting down here. Uh, there's five spots in the team, and there's ten people, right, excluding A and B. So this one is going to be ten choose five, because these two are already spoken for. They're not going on the team. There's only ten people left to pick from. This is going to be ten factorial divided by five factorial times five factorial, which is going to be two hundred and 52. And if we clean this up over here, we're going to find that the total number of ways to do this, to have two people refuse to be on the team, it's going to be 672 ways. Because again, we're going to pick either case one is going to occur, or case two is going to occur, or case three. So we add and we get our total.